long way to go for breakfast. Does not travel well. You saw her with the cardinal, and and she's going to murder Buckingham if necessary. And knowing Buckingham, the property will be here for this other. A moment, gentlemen, we're in the middle of our breakfast. And something that matters. We can't allow Buckingham to be butchered. Oh, no, monsieur, he's on their side. Precisely, and he's English. No, no, he's a gallant gentleman. And he loves our Queen. Well, I'm not going to sit by and allow him to be murdered by that... that... She also has a death warrant signed against you and your Madame Bonus. You eat this with your breakfast now. Let's tuck it safe in your brute, eh, boy? Strikes me we would be better employed ringing the lady's pretty neck than shooting these poor devils of Protestants. I mean, what are we kidding them for? Because they sing psalms in French, and we sing them in Latin? Oh, boss, how do you know it? What do you think religious wars are all about? Gentlemen, make your shots count. Will you please? Let me see. Hold up, don't care. I've heard that. Look about it.
the theater. Hatos, about Buckingham, I ought to warn the Queen. Talk about that later. Gentlemen, I suggest we get out of here. Take, take, take. Thank you very much, sir. This presentation will be on the campaign of 1634 and the Battle of Nordlingen. By the campaign season of 1634, both Gustavus Adolphus and Albrecht von Wallenstein were dead. The campaign would be conducted by the next generation of generals. Here we have Bernhard, he hates Horn. Here's Horn, he doesn't like Bernhard. The animosity between Bernhard and Horn was because they cannot agree on who outranked whom. The Rhinegrave, he was incompetent. Birkenfeld, Georg, Arnhem, he hates everybody, and Banner. The Imperialist armies were concentrated in the area of Bavaria. King Ferdinand and Gallus, Gallus was an alcoholic. Aldrina, the Bavarian army. And Feria, who were in Bavaria. And the Cardinal Infantante Fernando coming up out of Italy. Fernando is the brother of the King of Spain. His army was on loan en route to Flanders. I'm referring to moves as if this were a video game in order to give you something you can relate to. Horn from Swabia retaking positions lost to Aldringer the previous year. Gallus from Pilsen up against Bernard from Franconia. Bernard skirmishes with Gallus to oppose his move against Regensburg. Bernhard then moves to Kelheim and Regensburg is put under siege. Bernhard asks Horn for assistance and they move to combine forces in Augsburg. Rather than marching against Gallus' 25,000 troops in Regensburg, the Swedish camp commanders attempt to draw off Gallus by threatening Bavaria with their 22,000. Storm Lanshut, Aldringer is trampled to death by his own retreating troops. And Regensburg is taken. A Sw Swedish coalition force attempted to attack Bohemia from the north. Gallus moves north to oppose the Swedish attack. When the Swedish coalition fall apart, Gallus is free to move back into Bavaria. Donovert is put under siege. Gallus takes Donovert. Horn and Bernhard reunite in Ulm. Gallus moves to put Nordling under siege, Bernhard and Horn move to Bopfingen to oppose him.
The Swedes attempt to reconnoiter. reconnoiter. They find the river, the Eger River, too marshy to ford. A Croat screen prevents them from moving any further. Both sides await additional reinforcements. There's a major bombardment against against Nordlingen on the third, and a major assault on the fourth. The Swedes hold a council of war. Horn argued that the Imperialists outnumbered them three to two and held entrenched positions. The Cardinal Infantante was on his way to Flanders. Without them, the Imperialists would be outnumbered. Kratz and Rheingrave were just six days away. If Nordlingen could hold out for the next six days, something could be done. Otherwise, Nordlingen would have to be sacrificed. Bernhard accused Nord Horn of cowardice. He argued that two cities had already been lost. If Nordlingen was lost while they sat and did nothing, the Swedish reputation of invincibility would be lost. The Swedish coalition would collapse. The council voted to attack. The Swedish plan is to sever the imperialist supply lines and force the imperialists to dig them out. Basically, they're trying to cut this supply line. The Swedes attempt to surprise the imperialists by moving south. The Swedes hoped to make the imperialists believe they were moving back to Ulm. Croat patrols discovered the movement of the Swedish army as soon as they started movement. The imperialist army is in defensive positions. And the Swedes meet additional reinforcements in Neresheim. The Imperialists expected an attack against Nordlingen. When the Swedes didn't show up, the Imperialists took a break for lunch. The baggage train was left in Neresheim with half the Württembergers as guard. In this, the H will be the troops of Horn, B is Bernhard. The Swedish army then moved north. They went into Croatian patrols in the afternoon. Topographic map will be used to show terrain. Google Maps is great, but it makes everything look flat. So Bernhard makes, makes contact at approximately 1500 hours. Continue to push the Croatian patrols to the Hesselberg until the Bernhard's forces are completely exhausted. So they continue to move. Their maximum advance is at 1600 to about there. And that's when Horn now begins to move. He arrived at a, uh, after 2400 hours. Horn continues to engage imperialist skirmishers until well past midnight. This is basically the strength on both sides of the Battle of Nordlingen. During the night, the Imperialists dig, dug in. Horn and Bernhardt and their commanders planned the next day's battle and deployed their troops. The simplicity of the Swedish chain of command should have made cooperation easy. The inability of Bernhardt and Horn to decide who outranked whom made their cooperation impossible. Ferdinand III and the Cardinal Infantante were first cousins and friends. Their influence forced the imperial commanders to cooperate and kept Gallus' drinking under control. The Swedish artillery opens fire at, at, at 0500. The imperialists return fire. The Scots and Fool attack the Albuch here. Hornlieb runs into an unknown gully down here. 
the Swedish infantry pushed the imperialists' infantry out of their positions. Here, a powder wagon blew up, and Hornlieb engaged Toralto down here. Horn Lib hit in flank by Arburg and Latour, and the Swedish infantry are pushed off the hill. Iroquois advances into the into these positions. Piccolmini sent forward to reinforce to reinforce. And the rest of Hornley moves to the rescue. The Swedish cavalry withdraws. Spanish infantry reoccupy the positions. The Scots and Fool brigades reorganize. Horn and Rantazu brigades attack Spanish positions here. And the Croats move to the left flank of Bernhard's position. Spanish cavalry move to the Herkenheim. And the Swedish dragoons move to oppose the Croats. Full Scots and Württembergers attack again. Like how Light cavalry move into the Herkheimer Feld. Along in here. The Swedes launch another attack against the Albuch, and Horn orders Thun and the Ola Brigades against the Albuch. So as they move forward, these troops are then ordered to move as well. Horn sends a messenger to Bernhard for support during a fourth attack. Two and yellow brigades move to support. The Scots, Pohl, and Württembergers attack the Albuch after Horn and Ransau were pushed off. Two and the yellow brigades attempt to take the Albuch with firepower. So rather than pushing forward to attack in the flank, they move here and attempt to take the position with firepower. Turn and the yellow brigades are caught in a crossfire from the artillery behind them. Horn sent Horn Lieb to support. Horn Lieb sent forward without any real objective. And the Imperial Infantry on the Albuch now outnumber the Swedes. Wert attacked Bernhard Lieb cavalry. Bernhard Lieb forced back, and Horn continued to send in his infantry. There were between 7 and 15 attacks during the day. Kratz is set forward to, to rescue Bernhard Lieb. Up in here. Wert and Bulle move to oppose Kratz down in here. And Gallus move reserve to the center. Like so. Loren envelops Tun's position down here, and Wert and Berle move against Bernhard's cavalry. 
Bernhardt sends support to Bernhardt's cavalry, and Oxenterna's cavalry pulls out. This conversation was probably much less calm. Full leads, followed by the artillery, and then the rest of the army, done in here. Gallus commits his division. When they hit the disorganized Swedish cavalry, the Swedes were overwhelmed. Kratz was captured. The Imperial cavalry move on to the Hesselberg, overrunning the Swedish infantry as they do. The Scots retreat in good order. Everything else is going. The Scots move out on their own this way. Full escapes. The Bavarian Cuirassier cut off the retreat of the Swedes. The Scots retreat in good order. So So, tactical results. The Croats move and slaughter the 2,000 Württemberger guards and plunder the supply wagons. Nordlingen then surrenders on good terms, and the pursuit lasted all night and through the next day. This is the breakdown of the losses. Here it says 4,000 captured. One of the one of the peculiarities of the period is that POWs were drafted into the capturing army. These are the imperialist, imperialist losses. And the Cardinal Infantante continues on to Flanders. This is a comment by a member of the Bavarian army who was captured by the Swedes and forced to serve in the Swedish army. At Nordlingen he was recaptured by the Bavarians and returned to his Bavarian regiment. So, the results, strategic results, the Swedish military is no longer considered invincible, the anti-imperialist coalition collapsed, the imperialists launched an offensive taking Nürn Nuremberg, Würzburg, Heilbronn, Stuttgart, Mainz, Speer, Philipsburg, and others, the emperor pro proclaims the peace of Prague, Protestant forces quit the war, there was no longer a religious nature to the war. France now declares war against Spain, and the war becomes a war between the coalitions of Spain, Austria, Bavaria, and Saxony versus France, Sweden, the Netherlands, and Hesse. Battle awards. First off is to the Croats. The victory was largely due to their efforts. Croatian patrols prevented the Swedes from adequately reconnoitering the area to the north of Nordlingen and prevented any additional reinforcements from entering the, entering the city. Croatian patrols also prevented Swedish reconnaissance patrols from accurately mapping the range of hills to the south of Nordlingen, the area that was going to be end up being the battlefield. Croatian patrols alerted Gallus that the Swedes were moving south, and the Croatian patrols held up the Swedish army on 5 September and prevented the Swedes from occupying the Albuch. If you'll no, as a side note, You'll notice this black scarf. After the end of the Thirty Years' War, a number of Croatian troops joined the French army. It became fashionable in Paris to wear a similar scarf in the Croatian manner. Cravat is the French attempt to say Croat. This is the origin of the necktie. Additional battle awards to the, Swede to the Scottish Brigade. The Scottish Brigade continued to attack with near-suicidal ferocity. When the Swedish army was disintegrating, the Scots crossed the river on their own and retreated in good order. So, lessons learned. Napoleon says the greatest general is he who makes the fewest mistakes. So let's see who makes the few, fewest mistakes. This is my analysis. I am the only one to blame. Okay, Schwerpunkt Schwerpunkt 
is a German word meaning the, po meaning the point of focus. It's the area of concentrated effort. It is required at the Schwerpunkt to successfully attack. It's needed to have a 3 to 1 in superiority. The Swedes were outnumbered 2 to 3, and they were attacking an entrenched enemy. After the first attack was thrown back, they were never able to con concentrate the required combat power. Additionally, sleep deprivation kills. The Swedish army was on the march at dawn on 5 September. They marched approximately 30 kilometers and fought from approximately 1500 until well after midnight. The artillery bombardment commenced at 0500 on 6 September. Horn, Bernhard, and the rest of the Swedish commanders would not have more than two hours sleep in two days. Horn and Bernhard were much better commanders than one would think based on their performance at Norligan. Much of this could be, a could be a result of lack of sleep. The next lesson is pride goeth before destruction. Horn was accused of cowardice by Bernhardt at the war council prior to the battle. This combined with sleep deprivation may have been the reason why he continued to throw his infantry units at a dug-in position even after it became obvious that it was futile. So this is what the U.S. military refers to as the principles of war. We will then analyze this based on a principles of war perspective. The per first principle is objective. Every military operation should have a, have a clearly defined, decisive, and attainable objective. So, the objective on the part of the imperialists was to prevent the Swedes from cutting their supply line by holding the Albuk. They were extremely successful. Thank you. The Swedish... Their objective was to cut the imperialist supply lines, forcing the imperialists to raise the siege of Nordlingen. In order to achieve the objective, the Swedes would have had to take the Schoenfeld as well as the Albuk. They were unable even to take the Albuk. Also, Bernhardt launched the Swedish cavalry onto the Herkheimfeld. They had no real objective. So, offense. Seize, retain, and, exp and exploit the initiative. Okay, Gallus waited until the Swedes had exhausted themselves and then counterattacked. The Swedes, the Swedes were first to attack. Mass, concentrate the effects of combat power at the decisive time, place, and time. When Gallus counterattacked, the Imperialists attacked the disorganized Swedish cavalry by Herkheim. The attack drove through the Swedish cavalry and carried the imperialists to the river crossing at Ederheim. Horn's attack on the Albuk took the entrenchments until a powder barrel blew up. After that time, Horn repeatedly waste his infantry against an entrenched position on a hill. This was neither the decisive time nor place. Bernard also moved his cavalry against Herkheim. The cavalry did not attack and had no objective for being there. Economy of force. Allocate minimum essential combat power to secondary efforts. In the Imperialists, a minimal holding force was left to contain the garrison at Nord Nordlingen. Swedish Bernhard's deployment of his cavalry to the area of Herkheim dissipated the Swedish combat power for no apparent reason. Maneuver. Place the enemy at a disadvantaged position through the flexible application of combat power. The Imperialists sat in one place and let the Swedish forces beat on them. The Swedes, Horn consistently sent his infantry in frontal assaults against the Albuk. Well, Bernhardt sent his cavalry in a pointless deployment to the area of Herkheim. A unit of, unity of command. For every objective, ensure unity of effort under one responsible commander. Imperialists, the, prin the princely cousins kept the commanders under control and restrained Gallus's alcoholism. The imperialist command structure worked. Swedish, Horn and Bernhardt's animosity was due to their inability to, so to decide as to who was the ranking officer. This prevented them from working together. Okay, security. Never per permit the enemy to acquire an unexpected advantage. Imperialists, the Croatians were able to prevent Swedish patrols from obtaining intelligence on the location or activities of the imperialists, as well as the geography of the area. 
Swedish, Swedish reconnaissance patrols were never able to prevent Croatian patrols from obtaining intelligence on their, on their activities. Surprise. Strike the enemy at a time or place or in a manner for which he is unprepared. No attempt was made to surprise the Swedes. The Swedish attempted to surprise the imperialists by moving south towards Ulm on 5 September. Croatian patrols observed the Swedish movements as soon as the Swedes started moving. Simplicity. Prepare clear, uncomplicated plans and clear, concise orders to ensure thorough understanding. The imperialists, the imperialists stood in one place while the Swedes beat themselves to death, and then the imperialists counterattacked. Swedish horns simply launched attack after attack at an entrenched position. It was simple, it was stupid, but it was simple. So here we look at the very at the report card from the two on the two armies. As you see, the imperialists have done most everything well. The imperial the Swedes almost nothing. The Swedes managed to do almost everything wrong. The best thing they could have done was to take Horn's advice and abandon Nordlingen. Here's an online reading list. Let's go from there. The fiction, the adventurous Simplicusmus, is is good. It gives the it it does indeed give the flavor of the time because it was written just shortly thereafter. All right, general book list. C.V. Wedgwood, it shows its age, but it's still good. Uh, Peter Wilson is excellent, but it's very long. Richard Boney is short. And anything by Jeffrey Parker dealing with the time period is really, really excellent. Military book reading list. The two books by Gunthry go into great detail on the various battles. I could not have done this presentation without his work. These are also excellent, but unfortunately they're all out of print. And they're simulations. GMT Games does a series of games dealing with bat the battles, and there's even one in the campaign um, of the time period. They're very complex, but they're very good.